If you've watched my channel at all, you know I work on a lot of budget builds and other small projects, and I often find myself in need of cheap 128 gig or 248 SSDs. I've accumulated a few different models over time, but it occurred to me that I really don't have any idea which ones I should be buying. So I decided to test out a few different 20 to $25 SSDs I got off Amazon so that I can hopefully spend my money more wisely in the future. And if you're looking to buy a cheap SSD for a project, hopefully this will help you as well. These are the four drives we're looking at today. All of these are two and a half inch SATA 3 six gigabit per second drives, and I believe they're all built using 3D NAND flash memory, but not all of the Amazon listings are very clear. First up is the Lexar NS100, which when I bought it on Amazon, it was listed for $20.99. The listing shows up to 550 megabytes per second read transfer with write transfer speeds lower. I guess we'll have to find out how much lower. Next, we have the Inland Professional 128GB, which is also listed on Amazon at $20.99. This advertises sequential read and write speeds up to 510 megabytes per second and 410 megabytes per second, respectively. It also says 520 megabytes per second and 450 megabytes per second read and write, so I guess we'll just test both. Moving on, we have the Silicon Power A55 128GB, which was also listed on Amazon for $20.99. This model claims to have remarkable transfer speeds that enable faster boot up and improved overall system performance. Whatever that means. This drive also claims to have an SLC cache, which is a small section of the memory that can be used to temporarily read and write using the SLC write method that supposedly can help with read and write speeds, but it's not a great caching method from what I've read, and I think some of these other drives actually have an SLC cache as well, they just don't market it. The last drive is the Adata SU800, which is a little bit unlike the others. First, it's listed at $24.99 instead of $20.99. It claims to have read and write speeds up to 560 and 520 megabytes respectively, and it has dynamic SLC caching as well as a DRAM cache. The DRAM cache is actually a DRAM module on the SSD that functions pretty similar to the memory in your computer. It essentially gives your drive a place to quickly store and read information and should hopefully help maintain stable speeds over long sequential reads and writes. I actually had a fifth drive, the Kingston 120GB A400, but it was actually dead on arrival, and I didn't want to wait for a return to make this video. Now just because I happen to get a dead drive, it doesn't necessarily mean that the Kingston 120GB A400 is a bad drive, but just thought you should know. Now before we get started with testing, I want to be very clear about a few things. First of all, I'm only using a sample size of one drive, so it's very possible that these results could represent outliers rather than the average and expected performance of the drive. Also, I am by no means an expert. I know very little about solid state drives and the technology behind them. And while I did some research to be more prepared for this video, please don't take anything I say as an absolute truth. There are tons of other great resources out there, so definitely feel free to do your own research. And I know what the comment section is probably going to look like. At least someone is going to say something along the lines of WTF, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. We need at least one terabyte in 2022. You're just wasting your money, bro. And while in many ways I don't know what I'm talking about, I think there are many people, including myself, who have very practical reasons for using small SSDs like these. A few examples might include a small home server that either doesn't need the extra storage or uses mechanical hard drives, or a personal or gaming PC on a tight budget, or just a PC for grandma who is really only going to check Facebook and maybe download some ransomware. For all of the testing, I'm connecting the drives to my wife's PC via SATA. Her computer is an HP pre-built with a Ryzen 3500. I didn't want to tear down my personal rig and I figured hers would be plenty fast enough to make sure we're getting accurate results. We're going to be running three different tests in this video. First, we're going to reformat each drive and then run Crystal Disk Mark 8 using the default settings. After that, We'll install Windows 10 on each drive and test how long it takes to boot. To make sure the installs are identical, we'll use Clonezilla to duplicate a fresh install to each drive. Finally, we'll run Crystal Disk Mark again, but with the drives at a little over 80% capacity to see how well they perform when nearly full. To do this, I'm just transferring over a list of files to each drive to get the capacity to a little over 100 gigabytes. After testing all of the freshly formatted drives using Crystal Disk Mark 8, we got these results starting with the sequential reads. 
Now, I'm going to take just a moment here to try and briefly explain some of the terminology. But remember, I'm not an expert, so don't be shocked if I get something wrong here. And if I do, definitely put it in the comments below so I and anyone else can learn from it. Sequential means we're looking at data that is written sequentially in one spot on the drive, so the SSD doesn't have to go looking around in a bunch of different spots. This is more representative of how the drive will handle loading large files. This one MIBI byte is the block size. Bytes are written to the drive in small sections called blocks that are sort of like pages. A small file may take up less than one page, or it may take up many pages. Even if the drive only needs one small bit of information from the block, it still has to read that entire block. This one MIBI byte block is very large and helps speed things up for large files, but isn't very representative of normal desktop use. It does, however, give us an idea of a more theoretical speed the drive can achieve. The Q here stands for Q depth, which is essentially how many things the drive is being asked to do at once. A larger Q can let the drive work on more operations without having to respond, improving read and write speeds. We also have the thread count, which is how many processing threads are accessing the drive at once, I think. This graph here is measuring the megabyte per second throughput of sequential reads using a very large one maybe byte block size. You can see that the A-Data takes the lead here, but all of our drives are pretty comparable in performance, with the Lexar struggling a bit with a Q depth of 1, and the Endland falling behind in both a Q of 8 and 1. We can also measure this test in IOPS, or input-output operations per second. While the amount of operations performed is pretty crucial to a drive's performance in many applications, we won't touch on it much in this video, primarily because the IOPS results are pretty consistently proportional to the megabyte per second results. You can see that when we compare the megabyte per second results to the IOPS results. Next, we have sequential write speeds using the same block size, Q depth, and thread count. In these tests, all of our drives performed nearly identically with the A data just barely maintaining a lead. The IOPS result is once again almost exactly proportional to the megabyte per second result, and this trend continues throughout the rest of the benchmarks, so I'll just be skipping those results for the rest of the video. I will post a link, however, in the description to a Google Sheet with all of the raw data so you can check those results out if you're interested. We'll go ahead and move on to the random reads where things start to get more interesting. Here, the data is randomly stored in smaller 4 kibibyte blocks across the whole drive, which is often what you would find in a real-world scenario. With a large Q depth, the A data runs away with this one, followed by the inland, and then with the silicon power and Lexar at around or less than half of the speed of the A data. As far as I'm aware though, a Q depth of 32 isn't often seen in desktop applications. If you know that your application or use case takes advantage of a high Q depth, then this info will probably be pretty helpful. But otherwise, a Q depth of 1 is going to be a more realistic benchmark. With this, the A data actually comes up just short of the silicon power drive. The Lexar really struggled in this regard, and I would imagine that application and file load times on the Lexar would be noticeably slower to the user compared to the A data or silicon power. With random writes, the results are similar to sequential writes. The A-Data SU800 is slightly in the lead here, and the Lexar falls a bit behind, but nothing really sticks out. This next graph just shows both of our sequential and random read speeds. No new data is here, but I thought seeing them all together might help with comparison. After installing Windows 10 on each drive, and then doing an initial boot to make sure everything was good, I ran three boot tests, starting the timer on the first frame that the power LED was on, and stopping it when the clock on the Windows login screen was rendered. I'm showing the median result of each drive here. The result isn't very exciting or shocking. The Lexar, A-Data, and Inland all managed almost identical times of around 21 and a half seconds, while the silicon power took about a half second longer at 22 seconds. That's possibly within a margin of error, but all three tests on the silicon power were 22 seconds or longer, so it was a pretty consistent result. This is slightly odd considering the silicon power had pretty good read speeds, but I think the next set of results might explain why it fell slightly behind. I transferred an identical assortment of files over to each drive to get the capacity to a little above 80%. This is to see how much performance degradation there was when the drive was close to being full, and this is where things definitely get shaken up at least with random reads. Looking at random reads with a 4 kibibyte block size and a Q depth of 1, we see that the A data, while still maintaining a lead, is over 20% slower than when the drive was nearly empty. The silicon powered drive took the biggest hit. While once in the lead with this test, it is now over 40% slower falling behind the inland, which actually managed not to slow down at all. 
The Lexar even recorded a slight increase in performance, although still being the slowest drive in the test. And this increase is probably within a margin of error, but could also be due to some mistake I made with my methodology. With the less realistic Q depth of 32, we see a very similar result. The A data and silicon powered drives take a hit, and the Lexar and Inland drives maintain almost identical performance. Before we wrap things up, I thought it would be fun to compare my results to the advertised speed of each drive's Amazon listing. The Lexar stated that it could hit read speeds of up to 550 megabytes per second with lower write speeds. Looking at the best case scenario of a sequential read result, the Lexar barely achieved its target hitting 551 megabytes per second, and the write speed was indeed lower at 464 megabytes per second, so I would say these advertised speeds are accurate. The Inland advertised reads and writes up to 510 megabytes per second and 410 megabytes per second respectively. It barely fell short of its read target, hitting 508 megabytes per second on its best result, but hit as high as 480 megabytes per second with sequential write. The silicon power gave us no indication of actual speeds other than describing them as remarkable. I technically made remarks about them, so I guess their marketing is pretty spot on here. While the A-Data managed to take the lead in almost all of our benchmarks, it unfortunately didn't hit its advertised write speed of 520 megabytes per second, but managed to just barely make it above its read target of 560 megabytes per second at 561 megabytes per second. Out of curiosity, and just for fun, after I finished testing, I opened up each of the drives, and of course our A-Data drive is the only one that includes a DRAM module that you can see here. So no surprises. Just looking at the benchmark data, it's clear that the A-Data SU800 is the winner here, but that's a little unfair considering the $4 price difference and the DRAM cache you get for it. So here's my recommendation. If you're looking at buying a small SSD to use as a boot drive for your own or someone else's personal computer, spend the extra money to get a DRAM cache model. This A-Data SU800 works well, and is as far as I can tell, the only 128GB SSD with a DRAM cache on Amazon. However, if you don't think you need the DRAM cache, and you're looking at the offering of very cheap $20 128GB SSDs on Amazon, all I can say for sure is maybe avoid the Lexar NS100 128GB. The Silicon Power A55 seemed to have the upper hand until we started getting closer to full capacity, where it began to struggle with random reads. And although the Inland was behind in the clean Crystal Disk Mark test, it was only by a slim margin, and its performance was much more consistent. The hit to random read performance on the Silicon Power A55 is massive, so this makes me lean towards the inland here. But I'll let you make that decision. Once again, I'll leave a link to all of the raw test data in the description below if you want to check that out. I have no idea what longevity looks like with these, but as I continue to use them, I will add any updates either to the description, a pinned comment, or both. So maybe check those places out before making any purchase decisions. If you have any experience with these drives or other similar models, or if you have some sort of cool fun project using a small SSD, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear about it. And if you want to support the channel, a like is always super helpful, and you can maybe even consider subscribing to see more content down the road. For now though, thanks for watching, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.